Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight I bring you guys a ridiculously fast-paced, hard-hitting action from none other than German Battlecruiser aka Battleship Tier 8 Prince Ruprecht. Now, before this match gets kicking off, first of all, you're going to notice it's a pretty short match, and it's not even that somebody has crossplay turned off. Which leads me to believe that there was just nobody playing Tier 8 and Legendary Tier at the time. Which is weird. But, before we get this match started, I just want to say that, once again, we are on the path to 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. You guys are absolutely crushing it so far, but if we want to hit that goal and you haven't subscribed, punch that subscribe button. Be a part of something great. I know we can do this. You guys have been absolutely crushing it so far. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's jump right in. Now, Ruprecht is a nasty little booger. I'm telling y'all, this thing is so much fun to take out, and this plays right to my play style, all right? Like, you guys like to know, like, like to point out that I, I, I hate on the German ships. I, I, I'm not a fan, y'all know. But, I'm more than willing to give credit where credit is due. And by the way, this is after the nerf, alright? This is post-nerf Ruprecht. I'll let you guys decide whether or not this thing is, uh, still good or not. Here, we take a shot at the Worcester. We're not exactly like planning to hit that shot but you take it in case he slows down or does something crazy um yeah didn't happen but we're gonna try to put ourselves in a good position now you can see enemy ruprecht moving in towards us uh we have an enemy yamato moving across from right to left ish and there are two destroyers somewhere on this map we are on the weak side meaning our entire team is on the other side, and we got to try to hold this. Now, first things first, we see the Kaba. We go ahead and trigger the, uh, the secondary booster a little prematurely, but I wanted to make sure every one of the secondaries that we fire at this guy have the best possible chance of doing as much as possible. Unfortunately, our destroyer, 1v1ing a Kaba, that's not going to go in your favor, uh, especially if you just sit there and eat the torpedoes. Just say it. Maybe use that agility that the gearing knows and get the crap out the way. Now, with all of that, Kaba's in a position where he's in uh, hes in the middle of the map. He already fired his torpedoes. If we can move forward, uh, he's being spotted. We've got the secondary still running. You can see, rather than shoot the Kaba here, I'm actually trying to help get rid of the Worcester. Worcester's a radar cruiser, which could be a big hit for the... Oh my god, speaking of big hits, this is not going to be preferable. Uh, uh, yep, there's the Citadel, of course. Every time, it never fails. It never fails! If anybody hits me when I give up a broadside, it's Citadel City. I could shoot the same person broadside at same range with the same ship, and he, I would get, like, just regular pins or, or overpins. But it's just the way it goes sometimes. But it's okay. That just means we're fighting out of the hole, guys. Sometimes, you dig yourself in, and you fight back all right you don't give up never give up never surrender that is spartan law and by spartan law we will stand and fight and die and that is the absolute pinnacle of what this this uh or epitome of what this match represents we refuse to go quietly into the night I'm just going to keep quoting things from movies and from history until we, we finish this off. Worcester, like, I, this guy, I don't know what he's thinking here. Like, I really don't. We take a shot at him. He's just absolutely begging for it. We actually overlead him a little bit. He, I don't know if he slowed down. I think he did. I think he actually slowed down a bit. But look at these secondaries just yeeting. There's just all the yeets. Remember, we've got the epic secondary mod on this thing. So if we get over 50 hits with our secondaries, suddenly the secondaries start to yeet even faster. So that is our goal. Uh, Worcester goes down. So they have lost a radar cruiser. We have lost a Geary. And so now, look at the map. Look at the positioning of the two ships. Now, Ruprecht, to his credit, is actually going to put himself in a position to try to counter us from the right. Yami, on the other hand, 
has put himself in a position to come straight through the middle and charge straight ahead. And we are in the perfect position to yellow rush this Yamato. Now, if you're in the Yamato and you see a Ruprecht at seven and a half kilometers getting lit up, the last thing you want... Now, initially, I was hesitant here. I didn't want to just rush out because I know the Ruprecht is there. And I was hoping that this Yami would actually give us a broadside, but he turns bow into us. So here you can see I go for the guns. I'm like, okay, well, in this case, I angle. I make sure that he shoots the belt, and you see he does no damage. Yami shoots at a broadside, roughly, of a Ruprecht, completely misses or shatters and stuff on the belt. That's called using your head, right? Open the angle. Don't let him just shoot straight through the bow, even though Ruprecht has an icebreaker bow. Don't let him do it. Then, he's like, oh god, this guy's got torpedoes. Well, he knocks out one of our torpedo tubes. Big surprise. I don't rely on torpedoes. If you're dumb enough to give me this angle in a, in a freaking Yami at this range, you die. Like, there's no chance. You don't survive this. Uh, he survives the initial shot, and then, of course, we kill him with the second shot. So, again, it's one of those situations. Yes, we took a lot of damage. Now, here, my best bet would have actually been to keep sh sailing straight. But... Ruprecht gets a good shot through the, the rear of the ship. And I decide to go ahead and since I saved my torpedoes and didn't use them, uh, we're going to launch him at the Ruprecht. Now, unfortunately, he did knock out one of our torpedo tubes in his, in his shot. I don't know if it was the Ruprecht or if it was the Yami, but he destroyed one of our torpedo tubes. So that leaves me only one choice, boys. We got to flip this boat around and go the other direction. Now here... Double fire, we put that out. We're going to go ahead and get bow in. Remember, he does overmatch us. All he has to do is shoot high, and he'll go straight through the front of our ship. Both of us got the secondaries of Yeaton. Uh, I've almost got my secondaries maxed out all of a sudden, and I was hoping to catch this guy with a perma flood here. You can see launching the torpedoes out there. Unfortunately, we didn't catch him with the first ones. Here, you can see I'm trying to aim high, but the shells had other plans. They went straight down into his armor belt, which is not ideal. We know he has an icebreaker, but unfortunately we could not get the shells to go where we wanted them. But we did get all the torpedoes out there, and we placed them in a pretty solid location. And if you look, it looks like he's going to eat at least two, maybe three of these torpedoes. And we hit three torps and get the flood. Now obviously he's going to damage con that, he doesn't have a choice. If he doesn't, he dies. So he damage cons, and... We took most of his health, and that leaves this Alaska to be able to finish him off. Alaska's doing the right thing here. He's using my corpse as a torpedo protection. I know! It's a crazy thought. He can just pull up beside my dead body and use it as a torpedo guard. And between him and the Savetsky Suez, which I'll be honest, I didn't even notice was able to shoot this guy, Savetsky Suez manages to take him down. And we avoid all the torpedoes. you love to see it. So, I will let you guys decide. Did I make the right play? Sometimes, like yesterday, we showed the battle in the Jean Bar where I think I made the wrong play by allowing myself to be rammed. Um, I should have stayed alive to have the extra guns available to kill the, the destroyer, and we potentially threw that match. Fortunately, our teammate managed to win the match anyway. In this one, I think I made the absolute best possible decision that I could have made, which was go straight for the Yami, get those gigantic overmatching guns out of here. We don't want them. Get them out of here. We helped weaken the Kaba, and we took a good chunk of the Savetsky, or not Savetsky, but the, uh, the Ruprecht's health. That's two huge ships that we managed to basically get rid of with you know, minimal effort on our part. But 147,000 damage in, like, no time flat. Like, just straight up, Ruprecht does what Ruprecht does, which is just annihilate when given the opportunity. Here you can see the Shima. The Shima spotted this entire time. I don't know why he thought that he was going to get away with this. He doesn't have the hit points, and he's about to pull out in front of two battleships in a small gap, and all of them are looking right at him. So as soon as he's available, all the guns get fired, and that's just death. <laughs> like, I'm fairly confident if that guy was full health, he still dies. But uh, he goes down. These guys are both already on the same page. They're like, okay, Shima, Gap, we killed him. Get out of the way of the torpedoes. Just in case he does get them off. I don't think he actually did, 
but just in case he were to get those away. Now, the enemy still has a Minnesota. They still have a Kaba. Our Alaska is doing the right thing, going straight for the cap. Force the enemy to come to you. All right? Now, the Minnesota is still very, very healthy. He hasn't had to fight anything, uh, which is fine. Because at the end of the day, we have four ships, they have two. Their Kaba has no hit points, and their Minnesota, while he does have a lot of hit points, is it's just a matter of time. Uh, he's too slow to get away. He's going to be able to be countered. And uh, the way our team is moving, you can see the two battleships sticking together. If they have will to rebuild, that's going to be active. Alaska going up into the cap to try to capture the base and force their hand. They're creating a pinch. What we call a pinch, or a flank. So Alaska is going to be able to take on the front, and the Minnesota is going to come over and, and try to uh, deal with him, right? That leaves our destroyer in the middle, which is a Shima, and our two battleships to push up on the Minnesota and catch him in a crossfire. There's only so much you can do. The Alaska is actually making the right choice here. Rather than try to go forward, he knows the Minnesota's on his way, he knows the Kaba's over here somewhere, so he tries to hug the island, force the Minnesota to come all the way around, all right? Let him come through the gap. You can see where our teammates are. Our Shima is basically in the perfect spot. You can see Kaba gets into the gap. Uh, we know it's Kaba because there's no chance that the Minnesota got there that fast. Um, and Kaba, I believe, takes a shot just as he goes behind the island here. Uh, which I don't have a problem with. It gets the base reset just in case something were crazy were to happen. But uh, actually, it was it was the Minnesota that got out of the cap. Uh, I'm fairly confident Kaba does take a shot here, though. But I think Kaba was coming from further out. But you can see Minnesota gets through the gap. Shima does not have the torps in time to uh, deal with him. However, Shima's actually not going to uh, sit in the gap. Shima's going to wrap around the island and come up on the other side of the Alaska. And what this is going to do, it's going to catch the, the Minnesota completely off guard. Um, you can see there's the Kaba shooting across just before he gets behind the island. A perfect, perfect time. If you're going to take, take those shots, he's able to do it and disappear just as quickly as ever. However, the battleships did get shots at him, and I don't know if they hit him or not. We'll have to check his health next time he gets spotted. But I do believe that somebody managed to hit him. Um... Now, Minnesota takes a chunk there from one of the battleships. Um, you can see Minnesota is just going straight at this guy. Um, he's turning away, which is fine. Uh, he's trying to angle against the battleships, but that's going to leave him, again, because of the crossfire, that's going to leave him open for this Alaska. Alaska reaches around the island, and Alaska punches a little bit. Not the best shot by the Alaska. Uh, maybe rush the shot a little bit, maybe next time. You know he's angled, you know he's got a very good armor belt. Maybe wait for that superstructure. Minnesota actually showing that he has a pretty good idea what he's doing as well. Minnesota takes the shot into the superstructure of the Alaska. He knows he doesn't overmatch, so he takes the shot into the superstructure and takes a good chunk off the Alaska. Unfortunately for Minnesota, what looked to be terrible torpedoes from the uh, the Shima end up being amazing because Minnesota turns right into him. And at the end of the day, you're not going to have a good time if you're taking Shima torps. He takes one, takes two, and that's a wrap. And it looks like he would have taken this next set as well, at least one of them. But that takes down everybody except the Kaba, and from here, everybody should just get into the cap. Um... Battleships are in a perfect position to not only be in the cap, but also push behind the island, and it doesn't look like anybody managed to hit him. He's still pretty healthy. I don't know, maybe he healed up, but uh, he gets spotted, he gets shot, there goes all of his hit points, and, I mean, with the secondaries of the GK uh, reaching out and touching, he I do, I do believe he goes dark here, uh, just temporarily, but again, you've got a Shima on the right side that should be able to spot him, you've got an Alaska there that should still have his radar, I would imagine. So, it's just a matter of time before you get lit up again. And our battleships are right there, again, with the crossfire. Like, this is this is textbook creating crossfires. Now, to Kaba's, to Kaba's uh, defense, he does manage to land a torpedo here. But those are black hole torpedoes. We've talked about it before. Kaba torps are so freaking sneaky. With under a minute to go, Kaba fires his guns, pulls out right in front of the Shima and the Alaska, and takes hits from the Sovetsky Suyas, and down he goes.
So let me know if you guys thought this was a fun one. It's just a quick one on a, on a Sunday to show a little bit of fun in the Ruprecht. 147,000 damage. If you like what I'm doing, punch the like button. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.